guys. Welcome to another learning opportunity with me. This week, we are going to have circular functions and its graph. All aboard. Let's start exploring the sine function. Using our graphing application, we graph f of x equals to sine x. Let's start the exploration by identifying the possible x values in this given function. In short, we are referring to the domain of sine x or the sine function. As you can see, the graph goes on to the right and to the left infinitely. And it is continuous. All the points on the graph are included. So in this case, we can say that the domain of the sine function is the set of all x's such that x is an element of the set of real numbers. Now for the range, this refers to the set of possible y values. Based on the graph, we can see the interval from negative one to positive one. So in this case, the range of the sine function would be r is the set of all y's such that y is greater than or equal to negative one, but less than or equal to positive one. Okay, as you can see, these are the values that can be taken by y, or this is the output when we replace a certain value to x in the function. Now we start determining the amplitude of the sine function. It's the average of the highest of the difference between the highest value and the lowest value. So in this case, we can see that on this point, we can have the lowest value, which is negative one. And on this particular point, we can have the highest value of, this, of the function, okay? And this is repeatedly, okay? existing, the highest and lowest values appears to be um, repeatedly occurring, okay? So to get the amplitude, we have to get the average, okay? We have to get the average of the highest value, okay? the absolute difference of the highest value, which is one, minus the lowest value of the function, which is negative one. Simplifying the given expression, we will have one half times the absolute value of one plus one. Simplifying what's inside the absolute value sign, we will have Two. The absolute value of positive 2 is positive 2. Simplifying, we will have 1. Therefore, we can say that the amplitude of the sine function is 1. What about the period of the sine function? Okay. The period is that interval in which the function has a complete cycle, okay? The period can be found, the period of the sine function can be found by getting any point on the graph, okay? So let's say we get this, this will be our initial point. Now we trace and see whether we can have a complete cycle. So we go up, 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 and down. So here is the pattern. Then here we were able to get a complete 
cycle. So in this case, the period of the sine function of sine x is 2 pi. So using the formula, the initial point is 0. The initial point on the x-axis is 0. Well, the terminal point, if the x-axis after having a complete cycle is 2 pi. So getting the difference between, okay, absolute difference since we have distance. So we have 2 pi minus 0. That will be 2 pi. So it supports our claim that the period of sine x is 2 pi. Now, what about the frequency? Okay, the frequency is defined as the number of times the cycle in occurs in a given interval. So if we take the interval of 0 to 2 pi, you will have a frequency of one complete cycle. So frequency is 1. That's all for the sine function. The general form of sine function is given by f of x equals b plus a sine times the quantity c x plus d, where a implies the amplitude, c as the frequency, then b indicates the vertical shift, and d as the horizontal shift. Now let's start exploring the sine function. Remember that the general form of the sine function is given by f of x is equal to b plus a times sine times the quantity cx plus d. You know what if we change the values of these variables a, b, c, and d and try to discover what happens to the graph of the function. Now, remember also that the domain of f of x equals sine x is the set of all x's such that x is equal to any real number or is an element of real number. While for the range we have y is the set of all y such that y is less than or equal to uh, 1 but greater than or equal to negative 1. Or you can say this in another way around. We have y, the set of all y, such that y is greater than or equal to negative 1, but less than or equal to positive 1. And that the amplitude is 1 and the period is 2 pi. And between the interval from 0 to 2 pi, we have a com one complete cycle. So that means we have frequency equal to one. Now, what if we have changed the value of A? So from one, let's make it two. So on the graph, you can see, or on the screen, you can see the graph of G of X is equal to two sine X. Let's compare the two graphs. In the function g of x, the minimum value is at negative 2, while the maximum value is at positive 2. For sine x, the minimum value is negative 1, and the maximum value is positive 1. That means changing the value of a will also change the amplitude of the original function sine x. But still the domain is the same. It's the set of all x such that x is, uh, is an element of the set of real number. While for the range, the range is not anymore the interval from negative one to positive one. The range will be equal to the set of all y such that y is equal or greater than negative 2, but less than or equal to uh, positive 2. So that means the amplitude is not anymore 1, but it is 
already two. The highest value is positive two. Okay, let's get one half of the absolute value of the highest value minus the lowest value, which is negative two. Okay, then we simplify, we have one half times two plus two, then we will have one half times four. Simply find that we will have two. Therefore, the amplitude is positive two or two, simply two. The period is the same, which is two pi. You take a look, we can, we can still have one complete cycle in the interval zero to two pi. Now, what if, what if we will have the, we will have the change in the value of C? So let's take a look at, let's take a look at, I'll erase first the notations, okay? So that we can have a clear, uh, clear screen. Now, what if there is a change in the value of C? Okay, so you can see now, h of x is equal to sine three x. Okay, so let's compare. The domain is still the set of real numbers. The range is still the same. It's the close interval from negative one to positive one, or just as what is written, y is greater than or equal to negative one, but less than or equal to positive one. So for the amplitude, we can still see that the maximum value is at positive one, while the minimum value is negative one. So let's see if there is a change. So we will just have to take one half of the absolute value of the highest value minus the lowest value. Still, we have one half of two. So still, the amplitude is the same. But what about the period? Okay, so in the interval zero to two pi, let's see how many complete cycles do we have. So we will have one, okay, I'll change first the color so that you can see, then we will have one, okay, up, down, up. Okay, so we have one complete cycle here. Now let's have another cycle. Well, I'll change the color so it will also not be counted as the same thing. So here is another cycle. Then another cycle would be from this point up to T high. So in this case, the frequency is not anymore one, but we will have three. Now to get the period, the period would be equal to, okay, equal to the absolute value of, okay, two pi divided by three, which is the frequency. So we will have period equal to two pi over three, or you can also have two thirds pi. So if you can see here, 2 pi is divided or into 3. So you can see that we can have a complete cycle from, okay, from 0, then this will be 2 thirds pi, okay? So if this is from 0 to pi divided by 3, so we will have 2 thirds. Okay, so that's the difference between uh, the sine function and sine function, which is given by f of x is equal to sine x, and the other function, which is h of x, is equal to sine 3x. Okay. Now, what if, what if we will have 
a change in the value of D. Okay, so let's see what will happen to the graph if the value of D is changed. Okay, so here we have f of x equals sine x, while for p of x, we will have equals to sine of x minus 4. Okay, so let's just erase this. Okay, so we have a clear view of what happened to the graph of sine x when we change the value of d. Okay, so again, if let's start with the domain. Okay, so the domain is still the set of real numbers. Okay, the range is still the same. The maximum value is one. Okay, the minimum value y is negative one. So that means the amplitude is the same. Okay, what about the period? So let's see if we get this, okay? So let's have a, a specific point. Okay. Where we can have the x intercept. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's change the unit. Okay. So we will have here. Okay. So let's compare. So this is the original function sine x. But this time we have changed, instead of having sine x, we have sine x minus four. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, what if we get this point? Okay, let's trace the function in order to get the period. So from this point, then let's see. So, okay, going down, then up. Okay, so we have this. Now, take note. Originally, the intercept of sine x, okay, the y intercept of sine x is at zero zero the x zero zero is also the x intercept but if we will have sine of x minus four then we will have a movement of four units to the right so that means if we will have um a change in the value of d if we will have minus four, it's like we have a shift horizontally, four units, horizontal shift to the right. Okay, so that's it for the change in the value of D. If you would like to change, uh, if you would like to explore sine x plus 4, try to see okay, if what will happen if we will have x plus 4. So in this case, ah, sorry, for that, x plus 4. So take a look, we have the red graph. If we will have x plus 4, okay, let's see. It's like moving the it's like moving four units to the left. Okay, so if you have D equals to a positive number, 
it's a shift to the left while if you have a negative number it's a shift to the right okay since we have the general form that is f of x is equal to b plus a sine of cx plus d okay now what if what if we have a change in the value of b what happens if there will be a change in the value of b okay so i'll move first the other function so you see now the okay the graph of q of x equals to one plus sine x so from zero there is a change in the value of b it becomes now one so take a look if this is the origin okay both the x and y intercept of sine x okay this time it seems that there is a shift upward okay or translated upward so from zero to one so in this case we can say that the graph of sine x is shifted upward or downward if the value b will change. So if it's positive, it's a shift upward units and b units, while if b is negative, then it's a shift b units downward. Still, the domain is the same, but the range, of course, will change. But the period is also the same, still the same. The frequency is the same. Okay, so try to explore other possibilities as we discuss the sine function. You can also do the checkpoints in our module to check your understanding.